Hi everyone, Alex here. On the last video, we'll learn how to include our Nexus credentials into our build.yaml file, or just like in the GitHub credentials, in order to be able to deploy our application using the MUnits into our new CI-CD pipeline. Now, in the last video, we didn't learn how to actually do an MUnit coverage. We only learned how to run the MUnits from the CICD pipeline in GitHub Actions. So on today's video, we are going to learn exactly just that, how to add the MUnit coverage into our CICD pipeline. So this part is gonna be actually way simpler than the past one. Since we already have all the Nexus credentials and all the configuration to run the MUnits, the only thing that we are going to add here in the POM XML is the configuration for the necessary minimum percentage required to pass the build. So inside the POM XML, we can scroll down until we see build plugins, and then we will search for the MUnit plugin right here. Come Millsoft MUnit tools. The first thing we're going to add is going to be here in the configuration part. Inside the configuration, we are going to add this environment variables, which is secure.key. This is a decryption key that we've been using from the previous articles. And here we are going to set up the decryption dot key, which is what we have set from our GitHub actions. If you want to just confirm that all of this configuration is set up properly, you can just go to the previous articles or the previous videos to make sure that your secure dot key or, the, or your decryption dot key are set up properly. After setting that up, you can just go here inside coverage and you will notice that you are already running the coverage. So now under that, we're going to add the fail build true. So if this configuration is not completed properly, then the build is going to fail. That is exactly what that means. And then we are going to set up the required application coverage to 90. In this case, this is my own configuration. I want it to have a 90% coverage minimum in order to pass the build, but you can set up however you want. Other options that you could also have is required resource coverage. So for every resource that you have, you will have, for example, a 50% minimum coverage. And another setting would be the required flow coverage. Also, let's say, for example, 50%. So you can set all of these up, or you can set just one or maybe two or however you want this to be configured. In my case, I just want the whole application coverage to be 90% minimum. So that's what I am setting right now. Now you can leave this configuration like that and it will create an HTML coverage report, or you can also set up more formats like console, sonar, JSON. But honestly, I feel like only the console and the HTML are really useful. The JSON is useful if you're going to be using this information for other pipeline or for other thing and the sonar, well, if you're running sonar queue. Now we can simply save what we have here in the POM XML and that's it. Or if you want to see all of these reports from the GitHub pipeline, then you have to add something into the build.yaml file. So if we go here to GitHub workflows build.yaml and we scroll down in the test job all the way to the end, we will be able to add here another step, which is to upload the MUnit reports. Basically using the actions upload artifact, we are saying name this artifact MUnit test reports and take whatever is in target side MUnit coverage and put it there. For more information about this configuration, you can just go to the docs. I will add this link in the description of the video, or if you go to the article in Prostep, you will be able to see this link. So now that we have all of these changes in POM and build, Let's simply push all of this into our branch and see how it's running. And now if we go to our GitHub repo in the actions tab, we will see that this is already running. We can open it and see that it is running the testing. And at the end of the test, we will be able to see the console report. Here I have already all of my coverage is 100%. So I already covered every single thing from my flows. So I have 100% coverage, everything passed, and this build is a success, at least from the test. Right now it's trying to deploy and we will wait until that is done. 
And once this is finally deployed, we can see the status is started and we can go back to the GitHub Actions. This is all green, so everything was done properly. Now, if we scroll down, now if we scroll down here, we will be able to see some artifacts right here. So we have the artifacts, which is where we have our jar file and the mUnit test reports, which is where we can find our sonar, HTML, JSON, and I believe the console is already done. So you will be able to find those there. If you click on it, it will download a zip file and you will be able to unzip it and see the results there. And that is all for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope it works for you. And as you can see, it was very simple. You just have to set up the PomXML. And if you want to also get the artifacts from the CICD pipeline, you also have to set up the build the build YAML file, but it's not that hard. I think I'm pretty much done with everything you all have been asking me, but on the next video, I will go ahead and explain how to sign in into any point platform using GitHub Actions. But if you are using MFA or multi-factor authentication in your AnyPoint platform account, so far, since I've been using free accounts, I don't have to have MFA activated, but a lot of the enterprise users, I believe all of them, have to use MFA on their organizations. Instead of using the AnyPoint platform password and username, you will have to use a connector application, and I will show you how to do that in the next video. Let me know if you have more suggestions of what else do you want me to cover on this content of CICD pipelines and I will try to make it happen. <laughs> all right, that's all for this video. Bye-bye.